What's up people? My name is Garen Phillips. I've been teaching myself the stock market for four years now and today I'm going to explain to you what the heck is going on with GameStop. We have seen a massive surge in the stock price of GameStop. 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 If at any time in this video I'm saying things or using words you don't understand, go ahead and pause the video, go to Investopedia and search the word or go on Google and search the word and read about it, learn about it, come back to the video and continue. That's the fastest way to learn the stock market. I know it's tedious, but that's how I did it, and that's how you should do it. All right, so let's get into it. The pattern that is occurring with GameStop is called a supernova. It's also called a pump and dump, and it's also called a low float short squeeze. It doesn't really matter what you call it, they all kind of work the same. You can Google those, learn about them, but what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna to explain to you the psychology behind why these things happen and technically how you can trade them or make money off of them and also how to not lose money on them. This is one of the first patterns that I ever learned in day trading and you can make a lot of money on them. Uh, actually, let's see, it's, this, this stock went from $20 to $500, which is a 25 times increase in value. So. There's a tremendous amount of volatility here, tremendous amount of opportunity to make money, but also a tremendous amount of opportunity to lose money. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how it all works. Let's go. Well, actually, before we go, I have to run to an auto store to fix my car real quick. So we're gonna finish this video somewhere else after I drink my protein shake. All right, car is dropped off. I need to find a coffee shop. But let me explain the psychology behind GameStop and why it's happening the way it is. So have you ever had a friend or somebody hits you up and they're like, hey man, I got this awesome opportunity and they get you all hyped up or whatever. They're trying to sell you something. You want this, huh? You want the ball? Yes, I would like to have it very you much. You want it, huh? You want the ball? Yeah, yeah, I would enjoy having it. Yes, give it to me. Go get it. And you get into it and you, you got hooked. You got, you got done did. <sighs> Ever been into a multi-level marketing company? Supernovas and what's happening with GameStop is the MLM version of the stock market. It's, it's a hype thing. So what happens is with these supernovas, they're called low floats and float means the amount of shares outstanding in the market, how many shares are out. There. So for example, Apple share price is $138, but they have 2 million shares outstanding. 2 billion, not, not million, 2 billion. I love when my dyslexic ass screws up numbers. Which means you, a buyer, an investor, you might buy three or five shares of Apple, whatever, thousand dollars of Apple. But you're not gonna move the stock at all with three shares when there's two billion out there. Compare this to like trying to lift a 500 pound anvil to GameStop, which is 50 million shares outstanding. So with because there's such a small amount of shares out there, if you buy up a million shares and GameStop was only 20 bucks or something around there, if you buy up a million shares worth of GameStop, you're gonna move the stock. And what happens is with these supernovas is people will put a bunch of, dump a bunch of money into them, which will move the stock and it will pop up on scanners for day traders and then other day traders will start to pump their money into these stocks. And then it just, it, because it's such a low float and it's very volatile, it will just rip up and it can move 25 times its own value in a very short amount of time. And because this was ran through Wall Street bets and has been hitting in the news and stuff and it's been hyped up and it's all over the place, people get buy into the hype and they put their money into it and it just skyrockets and takes off. So this is the psychology behind how these patterns move. Let me now tell you a little bit of the backstory and what happened specifically with GameStop. All right, so I'm gonna be honest, before sitting down at this coffee shop, I didn't really know the whole backstory behind the GameStop thing because I've been busy moving essentially. I've got a lot of stuff going on this week. But now that I've got on Reddit and Wall Street Bets and I've seen what's happening, oh my God, I wanna introduce you to somebody who after going through his Reddit account, see, before I opened this up and started learning, I thought that this GameStop thing was just a bunch of Wall Street bet Redditors that piled a bunch of money into this and pumped it up. No. Well, that I'm sure there's other people that got into it, but no. This dude is the god of GameStop. This dude puts Jordan Belfort to shame. Like, Jordan Belfort was a good sales guy, this dude is like a tactician of GameStop. This dude, I feel like I'm, 
I'm going through his posts, and he's been trading GameStop for over a year, but I feel like I'm looking at the Mona Lisa of trading right now. This is unbelievable. So let me introduce you to Redditor Deep Effing Value. Damn, boy, he fit. And if you're watching this, hats off to you, sir, for what you have done. I, I'm amazed. I'm, I, I respect this. <laughs> So if you go to his posting list, you can scroll all the way back. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, you can take the coffee. Thanks. This dude started out trading GameStop a year ago and has consistently traded GameStop and posted his trades on Reddit starting at $50,000 and has turned that into millions of dollars. And there's a lot to be said about that. So. Each ticker that you trade or watch in the stock market kind of has its own way that it moves. This dude is literally like the LeBron James of GameStop ticker. He knows this better than anybody. In his last post of January 28th, he purchased $750,000 worth of stocks and options and made $33 million off of this. And I, I just, I have to respect the hell out of that. You know, a lot of people are going to be talking about, is he manipulating the stock and stuff like that? In a way he is, but at the same time, this dude has been doing this, trading this stock for a year, and he's also taking a massive risk. Like, anytime you put money into the stock market, you are risking losing it. Mad respects to you, man. Anyways, let's get into what's going on with GameStop. So, it seems like this dude probably dumped a bunch of money along with some other Redditors into this stock, which made it spike up. And if we go over here to the chart, I will scroll back and show you guys what exactly I'm, I mean. So, all right, so this is the 30 minute chart of the stock and I'll explain to you how this works in a minute but for now what I want to show you is this this portion back here. So this flat line, this, I call this flat line patterns and these flat line patterns when they're low float, when they have a low amount of shares out in the market can turn into supernovas. So what typically happens is people will put money into these stocks and pump it up and then get it to spike. And you can see this spike right here at January 22nd where it pops up and then other traders start to see this and they start to pile into it. So the, the stock pops up and then scanners and other software that traders use to spot stocks that have a lot of volume coming into them, uh, those traders will see it and then they will jump in and start trading it. Now, combine this with all the news and Wall Street bets and you know, thousands or tens of thousands of people p piling money into GameStop, There's, it's not surprising why it just rips up and runs like crazy. You see the same thing with Bitcoin, 3D printing back in the ni early two 2011 had the same effect. You will see these patterns a lot, actually. Uh, this. The supernova pattern is not an uncommon pattern to have. There's typically five or more a year, and you see a smaller version of this pattern uh, almost weekly or monthly in low floats. So this is not an uncommon thing. This is a very common pattern that occurs. What's the correct way to trade this pattern? Well, the correct entries, if you're swing trading it, is down here at 41 or even earlier than that on the first pop, which is actually at $19, you would want to get in around $34 and $35 as it bases or it builds support in this area. And then you would swing trade that long. And as the stock runs up, you would be selling your shares. So this is the classic pump and dump pattern where people with lots of money and understand this stuff will stack their money very low into the stock and then as it runs up they're selling their shares uh, to people that don't know exactly what they're doing uh, and they're making profit on the upside next all right so i want to stop and add a few things real quick right here first google the word boiler room trading there's I'm not sure if boiler rooms are illegal per se, but if you're caught running a boiler room or doing what's happening right now, the SEC and the government can really mess up your life. I don't know if it's illegal, but just go Google boiler room uh, in day trading and see what that, those are. And second, I want to talk about short squeezes. So this is something I didn't mention in, uh, while I was at the coffee shop. So a short squeeze is 
Well, first, for a supernova to happen, if you have to scroll back all the way to the end of the timeline, and there has to not be really any big resistance behind it. So, so, so going back to, if you scroll all the way back to 2009, 2013, the highest, the highest the stock ever went for trading was $40. And that $40 is a massive resistance. In order for a supernova to become a supernova, the stock has to break past whatever the highest high has ever been. So if you look at the stock one today, in the past couple days, once it broke $40, that's when it has unlimited reach to move forward upwards. Because psychologically, traders will look into the past to see where resistance is. But if there's no resistance, then the moon is the limit. So that's the first thing about a supernova. And the second thing is a short squeeze. So big hedge funds and big, uh, not retail traders, but professional traders and algo traders and hedge fund traders, people that are moving millions or billions of dollars, they will short sell a company that is losing money. That's not gonna be, they think that it's not gonna be around a lot. And GameStop is a pretty easy fundamental short sell because they're being put out of business by Steam and Origins and any online game storefront because it's just an outdated business model. So it's a very easy short short sell. And if you go to finviz.com and you check the short float, it's actually 121%, which is which means there's more shares shorted than there are total shares float which is kind of crazy, I've never seen that. What happens is these, these big hedge funds or fundamental traders will short the, the stock as it's going down and they'll have a certain short entry. And if you don't know what a short is, it's essentially betting against the stock. There's a really good movie called The Big Short, which is around the 08 housing market crash. I highly recommend watching that. Or these hedge funds traders will short the stock, but if the float's low enough and you get a supernova, what happens is the supernova is going to rip and hit the stop losses of the short sellers and essentially wipe out all of the profits that the short sellers are making. And then on top of that, the short sellers are going to close out of their positions to mitigate their risk. But that close of a short sell is actually seen as a buy on the market. So a short squeeze is all of the short sellers get squeezed out of their positions, which turn into a buy, which also makes the stock skyrocket even higher. So it's it's like a perfect storm that occurs when it comes to these low float short squeezes or pump and dumps or supernovas, whatever you want to call them. This is how they maneuver and this is how they work. The correct entries on this stock is uh, pretty much anytime it gets close to one of the bottom lines. So a short sell would have been up here at 150. $68 would have been a buy or a flip flop if you're short selling. And then the next day uh, you would have stacked into it at 87 and you could have made some money throughout the long run at uh, up to 137. And the way you trade these is you want to buy the weakness and you want to buy the support and then you sell into the strength as it's going up. You buy weakness, sell strength. Now the next day when it pops up, this is actually a, called a range trading day. So the way this works is on the morning open, you would want to be going long around 240 to 250 and going short around 380. And then it's just gonna range throughout the entire day and you would just trade that range. And then if you had a really good entry on the low end, you could swing trade it. Now, today is where it's gotten really choppy and the, the pattern has actually reversed. The stock opened up at $260 and within 30 minutes, it touched all the way back to the top pre-market high, which is right here at $480. So the, the stock was ripping up and down very quickly and you essentially just wanna buy low and sell high and or buy the weakness, sell the strength. Now, throughout the day, it actually broke loose and broke this support level here so this is the you see where the stocks kind of bouncing in between this line periodically it rips below that and then comes back up and at this point it's broke pat it's broke the pattern that it was running so it came back up and bounced at 325 which is my white line and then it kind of just fades throughout the day now what's going to happen is this stock is probably gonna come back down to $125 and 
from there, it's going to do one of two things. It's going to flatline, and then the hype is gonna build back up, and people are gonna pile more money into it, and it's gonna run to the moon. Or it's gonna fail, and it's gonna rip down, and it'll, it'll drop back down to its original price, which was around 20 or $15. And this is how the pattern occurs every single time. It's a very similar pattern to Bitcoin, which is also why I don't touch Bitcoin a whole lot. Uh, the correct entry on Bitcoin was $4,000. If you got into it anywhere else than there, you're risking a lot. Okay, so that pretty much explains the psychology behind GameStop and how this occurred. And hopefully that gave you some insight on how you would trade a pattern like this. Now here is a golden rule that I wanna teach you because some people are gonna ask me how much money did I make on GameStop? And the answer is zero. See, I'm, this week has been one of the busiest and craziest weeks of my life. I'm breaking my lease, selling a property in Indiana, trying to sell my car. I've gotta be in Dallas next week and I might be traveling to San Diego the week after that. And I'm trying to buy a van for van life all in a matter of a month. So I've been crazy busy and I've kind of been watching this, but I haven't been able to you know, trade it. I had some entries in, but they didn't hit and they didn't tick. And this is the golden rule, or one of the golden rules to trading is don't ever chase a stop. Correct entries, as I've shown you, are early in the, early in. I'm never gonna shoot a video at an intersection again. All right, so the correct entries as I've shown you was a couple days ago at $74. Uh, anytime it bounces off of the low end of a range, and actually a good buy would have been $100 on the bounce of today. If you don't get the, the entry that you need to get or that you want to get, that is the good entry, you don't chase it. If you miss, you miss. There will always be another stock. There's always gonna be another supernova. This, these patterns will repeat over and over and over in the stock market. The worst thing you can do is chase a trade or fear of missing out putting money into something with a bad risk to reward, that is not how you accurately and effectively trade. All right, so I just got a call from the auto shop. I gotta head back and get my car. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that and explained some things to you. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to watch the stock. It looks like it's post-market. It's already broke past that major support line and it's back up to $300. It's probably gonna pull back tomorrow morning around 250. That would be a decent entry but we'll see what happens to it. I'm gonna, I might try to get into it. We'll see what goes on. I've got a lot going on tomorrow and I definitely don't wanna be in a super volatile stock while I'm traveling around trying to get stuff done as I'm moving. But two things are going to occur. It's gonna come back down to 250 and it's gonna hold and rebound and it'll probably return back to its morning range or it'll break the morning range and return up to $500. Or it will come back down to 250, fail, come back down and it'll bounce somewhere 225, 200. It's, it, at that point, it's gonna get really choppy. But that's uh, my analysis of GameStop. It's actually been a long time since I've made a stock market video. Kinda forgot that I enjoy this sometimes. If you have any questions, I don't sell a trading course or anything like that. I think it's kinda unethical to sell a trading course unless it's cheap. But if you have any questions, hit me on Instagram. I will be glad to answer any questions that you guys have. In fact, I'm actually making some stories and stuff talking about GameStop as this is happening. And the more I research the story behind this, it's getting really interesting with interactive brokers and Robinhood stopping people from making trades, which is, I don't know if that's illegal, but they're impeding the natural flow of the market. and. The way that works is very similar to what's called circuit breakers in the actual market. So circuit breakers are something that were put in place in 1930 or 1929 after the Black Friday or the, you know, the Great Depression essentially. Uh, a circuit breaker is where if a stock moves too much in a certain amount of time, the market will essentially freeze it and it won't be able to move and you won't be able to make trades or interact it and that's a very dangerous place to be as a day trader. And those circuit breakers do happen on these supernovas and these low floats, it happens all the time. But this is the first time ever, it's not a circuit breaker, it's the actual brokers that are stopping people from trading this. And if you've got millions of dollars in this stock and you can't exit, you're getting, you're, <laughs> It, it's, that's a terrible place to be. And there's a, this is 
we're gonna see court cases on this stuff. This is not, this is some serious stuff. This is, this is retail traders versus hedge funds. And what's gonna happen and what regulations are gonna be put on the stock market because of this, it's it's most likely gonna benefit Wall Street because it always benefits Wall Street and the little people always get screwed over. But I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Peace. Oh, I almost forgot. If you're watching this deep effing value, I would love to interview you. I actually just started a podcast and it would be really interesting to sit down and talk with you about your experience and what's going on with you. Are you getting sued? Is the government contacting you? Um, <laughs> is the SEC knocking on your door? Is the FBI showing up? So if anybody knows him or could put this video in front of him, that'd be awesome. Thomas, um, do, do you understand people's anger, your customers' uh, anger, given that essentially you, you changed the rules of the game right in the middle of the match, at the most important moment in the match, even if your terms uh, and conditions allow you to do that. Do you understand their anger that you changed the terms of trade for them uh, just as things were getting heated up? I do, but when you say right in the middle of the game, then you're saying as the squeeze is going on stronger and stronger. But that's illegal. That's manipulative. So it's, it, it cannot be done. So, so, as, so do you think... So I think somewhat responsible for what our customers are doing.